When I was the ripe age of five years old, my father got me and my brother our very first video game console, a Nintendo GameCube. Up until that point, I had only ever played those cheap Flash games on websites for kids' TV channels. The GameCube was my introduction to actual games. Ones that had challenge, complexity, variety, and the very first of them I played that stuck with me for years to come was a little racing game called Mario Kart Double Dash. Well, technically Kirby Air Ride was first, but I was only able to play that once before the disc got lost in the couch cushions for years to come. Thanks, Mikey. Still though, Mario Kart was great. It was actually my introduction to Mario, and boy was it an introduction. Everything about it, from the colorful 3D visuals to the creatively designed tracks, you know mostly, to the absolute banger music, I couldn't get enough of it. And yet, despite that enough of it I couldn't get, I was also terrible at it. Seriously, go back in time to the years I had my GameCube before switching over to the Wii, you would not go five minutes without hearing... <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know you could unlock a fourth cup until I revisited the game in my teens. That's how little I was able to accomplish back then. Now unfortunately, I can't exactly go back in time and watch my past self play this game to see specifically why I was so bad at it. As I grew up more and more with this series, however, I have picked up on a few things that probably went over my head when I was little, and I thought it might be fun to point those things out. So I guess if you're five years old and have just stumbled upon your parents' old GameCube, take this video as a list of rules to abide by when playing Mario Kart Double Dash. But then again, if you're five, you really shouldn't be watching this. You're too young for this channel. Get the hell out of here, you little fu- Rule number one, don't pick characters and carts based on looks alone. For Double Dash and the games onward, the characters you pick combined with whatever carts you give them will affect your stats in each race. You know, speed, weight, acceleration, all that stuff. Technically, Double Dash is a bit different in that the characters you pick don't really affect your cart stats, but rather give you a limited selection of the carts you can use. But either way, whoever you pick will affect how well you play. Now, did young me pay attention to any of that? Hell no. In fact, I didn't even notice it back then. All I cared about was whoever looked the coolest. Rarely would you see me try any other two characters than Donkey Kong and Bowser. This here? This is the real Godzilla X-Kong. All that mattered to me is that these were two big hulking beasts that looked badass. It also didn't help that my favorite looking cart you could use with them was probably the worst for someone like me to drive. Like, even as someone who's better at this game now, using this cart is still a pain in the ass. Don't let that speed stat fool you. It's not gonna mean anything if you can't quickly accelerate every time something knocks you out. Ultimately, my tendency not to try anyone else probably didn't help me in the long run. So I guess just don't be afraid to switch characters every once in a while. Rule number two, don't take detours to go down paths. When I was little, one of my favorite things about the tracks in this game was coming across alternate paths. They were fun additions to the level that would just grab my child mind begging me to go down them. So much so that whenever I missed one, my first thought was not to simply keep going and try again the next lap, but rather to turn myself around while letting all the other racers pass me. This was a habit I definitely needed to break. In fact, I wasn't even able to until I played Mario Kart Wii. Funny how frustrating and divisive motion controls could be a good way of stopping me from doing something stupid. A custom Wii wheel. Rule number three, know how to drift. This one is particularly embarrassing because I don't even have the excuse of having my priorities backwards. This was something I just straight up didn't know was possible. I mean, it's not like I never tried holding down the right trigger a few times, but I never did it while turning, so I probably just assumed that button didn't do anything. I mean, it's not like every turn in the game requires it, but I have been the victim of quite a few wall crashes in my youth. Rule number four, don't hold down boost before each race starts. Okay, to be honest, I don't think doing this is really that big of a setback, but I thought I might point it out anyway, cause... It's just kind of funny. Like, I knew this wasn't something I was supposed to do. I knew it would just cause me to skid out every time. I did it anyway, though, cause... Well, I honestly just wanted to. It felt wrong not to. Rule number five, don't use items as soon as you pick them up. Or more specifically, make sure you use items at the right time. To be honest, even now I have a bad habit of using items pretty much as soon as I pick them up, but I am still able to check myself half the time. As far as my own experience goes, there are times when it's fine to use them, and there are times when you probably shouldn't. If you aren't prepared for it to come back at you, don't use a green shell in a tight corridor. If you haven't mastered turning, don't use mushrooms over a bridge with no guardrail. 
got a red shell coming at you? Don't throw that banana peel away, hold on to it until it gets close. Needless to say, I didn't give any of that much thought as a kid. I craved carnage, there and then. Rule number six. Actually, that's it. So, there you go. Those are some things that I should have kept in mind as a kid. I think it's safe to say I was a very dumb child. But hey, I have a handle on the games I play now. I know how to figure stuff out. 